Hi, I'm Sierra Nielsen and I did criminal records and employment. And right now there are 2.2 million people in the nation's prisons and jails, a 40% or 500% increase in the last 40 years. Um, this, was, this came from the tough on crime era, which, which resulted in a dramatic growth in incarceration. Um, since the beginning of war on drugs um, in 1982, the number of people incarcerated for drug offenses in the U.S. skyrocketed from 41,000 in 1980 to 450,000 in 2016. The harms of mass incarceration um, do not end when an individual is released from prison. Instead, the criminal record haunts about approximately 7 million people in the United States today. Um, criminal record histories can follow a person's convicted of crime for the rest of their lives, creating collateral, collateral <laughs> consequences that make it difficult for these individuals to get back on their feet and gain stability. <clears throat> um, this is a great table from Federal Bureau of Prisons. Um, it's a government website. Um, this table is from April 20 or 2019. As you can see, this bar is way higher than everyone else, all the other ones. Um, that is 45.4% for drug offenses, um, which I pulled some different statistics that kind of have with the business um, that are much smaller. So you can see drug offenses are the biggest thing that our country is incarcerating people with. Um, so employment discrimination um, has been illegal since the pass uh, passage of the civil rights of 1964. Um, even though it's been illegal, it's still happening in the United States. Um, employers are, uh, you know, gaining employment is one of the most crucial steps for uh, citizens to regain stability in their lives, um, but it's still one of the biggest obstacles. Um, there's a social stigma around it because employers are worried about hiring people with, um, with criminal records due to fear of liability and um, the, the social stigma that attaches to people formerly incarcerated individuals. Um, lock, not being employed can lead to an economic strain for these, in, um, for these individuals. Um, it can also be, um, the EEOC also said it could be an inadvert um, discrimination due to the high percentage of minorities that have had arrests compared to non-minorities that don't have arrests. Um, that can lead to racial discrimination. Um, and they, there has been some laws like the ban the box movement where we, we saw with Obama's era um, that have been trying to help get people convicted um, of crime to get um, employed. Um, the ban the box refers to a checkbox check on employment applications asking whether the candidate um, has criminal histories or not. Um, ban the box re requires hiring managers to wait, um, putting off asking about um, criminal records and until the inter interview has been conducted or further in the interview process. Um, this can help reduce barriers in employment um, or employment for criminal records, people with criminal records, but it has created confusion and frustration for employers as it can serve, have penalties, um, can be really difficult to do the hiring process and it can erode a safety and security. Um, this is a small, our employers do have to um, still do background checks and follow the Fair Credit um, Reporting Act, but this is a small step towards giving individuals with um, convicted crimes a uh, chance at um, gaining employment, but um, an opportunity for employers to judge their candidates on who they are as people rather than looking at the convicted crimes, um, but it doesn't necessarily reduce the discrimination around it or the social stigma. And why should we care? Well, discrimination is something that we should all seek to eliminate, especially coming into the, the workforce here soon. Um, employers can miss out on tax incentives, um, and people who don't 
become in, unemployed or employed. Um, unemployment can lead to public assistance instead of them being able to become part of the tax base. Um, refusing to hire someone with a criminal record can contribute to low diversity in the workforce, which again can go to racial discrimination. And it also helps um, get increase the chances of someone not reoffending and it gets them on their feet and helps improve their quality of life, but also the in society's um, and society and community and the public safety. Um, so what we can do is just try to remove the barriers, the social stigma, um, and the ideas that we have around people with criminal records. Um, we want to, you know, it's great to see people turn their lives around. Um, and I would uh, recommend, you know, we're becoming future business leaders to examine and address policies and read up on these types of things because there are currently 7 million people that have criminal records and we're going to have to, we're going to face this situation one day. Um, and I also just encourage dialogue and debate to see, um, just to hear and listen more on what people are saying and doing. Um, you can also understand how to work with employees that have uh, committed, convicted <laughs> crime. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs>